Hey Mila, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm really excited to chat with you today about your art. I've been excited for this since we met first initially last September. Yeah. Just to get people to get to know you a little bit better, can you talk about your kind of journey into art? Yeah, um, well, I've always sort of been drawing um, and painting as a child. I started doing like sketches when I was 12 and started doing like portraits like that. Um, and did that for a couple of years and then sort of moved that into doing um, like oil painting portraits. Yeah. And I always sort of thought that I should, I always liked um, like surrealist art. Um, and so it's only in the last couple of years that I've actually started to do that. And now I started doing these collages. So, yeah, that's a really interesting journey from being kind of like portrait, portrait, portrait for how many years to then kind of switch it. Was there where did the kind of interest of surrealist art come from? Was it from school? Was it family? Was it like watching cartoons and how wild they are? Well, actually, well, I love cartoons and comic books, so definitely from there. Um, I've always loved like Salvador Dali's mm -hmm. sort of art, and I always thought that I should. I was sort of like, oh, I should be doing stuff like that. Mm. I don't know. I just didn't for a long time. Yeah. Jump, I just didn't jump into it. Yeah. Like my aunties both paint. So I've sort of oh, had really? like painting in my family, I guess. Yeah. Um, and painted as a child, um, but never anything that I like took seriously. Yeah. So, and it's only sort of like in recent years that I've been into collecting comic books oh, right. and looking at old um, like Disney cartoons, like... Um, like Silly Symphonies by yeah. Disney. I don't know if you know. Is that really? Is that a really old? One? Um, it's like the classic sort of black and white. Yeah. Um, like quite spooky cartoons. Yeah. Um, the old Disney is actually weird, isn't it? When yeah. You, like, look at the super steamboat Willy and all that kind of like really old Yeah, it's really old stuff. like scary. Actually, yeah. it doesn't look like it's for children. No. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think they did. Yeah. So they did seventy-five short films mm -hmm. in, I think, twenty-nine to thirty-nine actually, mm. and. Um, and I just love them. Like I think they, uh, it's basically like surrealist art when you look at it. Yeah. Um, it's all really sort of spooky and sinister, which is what I like to also um, include in my own art. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of inspired um, these collages, I think. And it's great you managed to take your kind of like talent that you've kind of built up in portraits to then be able to switch to this. I guess I learned to paint properly doing the portraits yeah. and then now I'm sort of, I mean, I guess I'm not really using the skill that much of actual <laughs> painting, but I mean, and some of them, some of them are more details than others, but I think I just got bored of the portraits and wanted to do something a bit more fun. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I love the bright colours and like the seven, sort of 70s look that you get in old like Tom and Jerry and Pink Panther comic books stuff like that so yeah. yeah well you can see your fashion matches it as well yeah. we've gone very bright today so I feel like we're definitely like emulating the theme I mean would portraits be something you'd like to go back to it some way would you kind of be like a real you know late Picasso do portraits in but in a real surrealist style is there ever any like hunger for um, that not really I like to sort of keep up the skill I guess because yeah because I did it for so many years but I think I just got sick of it and I didn't do it. I haven't done one for probably two years, but yeah. um, I'm actually about to do one soon. Oh, are you? So, yeah, just to sort of keep up the skill a bit. Um, but no, I think this, I found quite like a unique style, I think, in my art. And I want, that's what I want to continue yeah. doing. That's like your DNA of yeah. your art. Yeah. And you were talking there about like the portraits, you kind of like not being able to keep up with it. But like, I can notice from like this picture here, the detail, my God, the amount of like fine brushwork. There are tassels on that woman's skirt and that is like so tiny. And you collage it and like the detailing of like this and like the tiny little pieces that are floating out to the sky. Like I know a lot of this is like collage, you like mixed media here. Mm. Um, but you can't tell on like first look. So are you able to just describe kind of the media that you do use in your work? Well, I use, uh, most of them are acrylic. Uh, paints. Some of them are oil as well, depending on what I do. Like the sun is probably oil. I can't remember now. Okay. Um, and then, so I usually start out um, just painting the background, and then after I sort of figure out what I want to put on it. So then I look through all my cutouts, and then I look through all my magazines and stuff like that, and figure out what what to add, um, which seems sort of backwards but that's just how I've always done it. Do you know what I 
did a collage for the first time since, I don't know, school maybe, yeah. about a month ago. And I had this bit of cards and I had all my magazines and I stacked. And it's so hard to collage. You think that it's easy, but you kind of have to think of things that work in the same theme. So yeah. do you work thematically for each kind of piece that you do? No, it's all a bit big mess, really. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, so I've got lots of like um, old magazines from the 50s. Ah. Um, so that's, so if there's any sort of black and white, like the woman holding the the money there. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, would be from that. So I like having that sort of black and white old um, photos along with like this Modern. cartoony look. Yeah. Like with um, Tom and Jerry. Because that that looks quite and we've got a little Tom from Tom and Jerry there. Yeah. And then that looks like quite a retro Tom as well. That's not yeah. like, that's not the modern one. That's not no, the twenty twenty. Yeah, Tom. he looks a bit different depending yeah. on what year it's from. No, he's quite an old one. Um. I think most of my Tom and Jerry's are probably from 80, the 80s, I think. That's so cool. Um, it's like yeah. a time warp, kind yeah, of. Yeah, I know, yeah. You don't know where you are in time with yeah. some of your work. Yeah. Okay, should we have a look at another piece? <laughs> sure, yeah. Let's do it. So we're bringing in this one as well. I just whacked myself in the face with it. Um, are you able to talk through this one a little bit and you can speak kind of more generally about like your entire collection that we're going to see? Uh, yeah, so like this one is a f sort of a funny example of like doing the background first because I, I knew I wanted some this sort of um, the wall pulled pulling back. the curtain. And yeah, I knew I wanted maybe someone peeking out or some something mm -hmm. holding it back, but I didn't know what what. And then I found this tom that just perfectly fit into there. So I was like, oh, how. God, that's amazing that be, fit. Yeah. It would, yeah. you know, because I think lots of people, if they were working, they'd see the picture of Tom and be like, right, I'm going to try and yeah. fit something around it. But I love that you have this vision and you make it. Yeah, it's like a puzzle you sort of put together when you when you have the background. You you look through everything and yeah. the puzzle together is quite fun. <laughs> and do, does all of your work kind of follow like a similar theme? Like they're all kind of like puzzles that you're putting together? Well, the themes, they're usually, I mean, they're quite, most of them are sort of, um, quite serious themes mm -hmm. um it's a lot of sort of like good versus evil um and like love and tragedy and stuff like that along with <laughs> along with like a sort of humorous mm -hmm. aspect um so that's sort of the theme i i try to have throughout all my paintings yeah um yeah in terms of actually i don't really describe my paintings like individually because mm -hmm. they're all quite personal to me okay yeah um and i also like I, I don't like when artists like describe too much what it means or like give like a yeah. fact list of this is what you're meant to think yeah so like i like having the observer being able to make up their own mind about it and have their own personal connection yeah, to yeah. it as well so it's not like put in a box if you will yeah um yeah and the whole sort of point of of the artwork also is that it's paint on canvas and that's like how you express it um as opposed to like a text telling you what what to think because they're all very personal to me um and i don't like to sort of put them in the box in a box of mm. what people should think of them i like people to be able to observe them and like apply it to their own experiences and emotions or whatever they might feel when they see it like I don't like when other artists over explain their work too much mm. and the whole po point of painting I think is to express something through painting mm. uh, on a canvas and not explain it. So That's true. So I guess for like the observer it's like whatever you get out of this that's right. Yeah. Just, it might be something different for you, it might be something different for you but you're all getting something out yeah, of it. Yeah, you like apply it to your own experiences. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now, of course, you had your own solo exhibition, which yeah. was absolutely incredible. Yeah. How was it for you? Uh, it was great. It's my first ever solo exhibition, so it was really exciting for me. Yeah. Um, really cool to see my art all in like one space together, because um, obviously at my house it's all just like sort of packed away in corners oh really so it's not kind of out no no so seeing everything out uh, together is really really cool really cool event and like having like friends and family being able to like come down yeah, as well yeah exactly and just seeing observing people like looking at your art and like observing it and looking at it and 
is hung where yeah, it should be. And sure. I guess that's one of the brilliant things about the Dubel Prize. What was the process like of you kind of entering and discovering the prize? And then what was the moment when you found out that you were a finalist? Yeah, well, so I've been applying to different sort of open calls for exhibitions and different competitions and stuff like that. Um, and with the Dubel Prize, you had to uh, enter a video, I remember, and I remember struggling a lot on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, like took so many takes and oh. like spent the whole day on it but I was like it's worth it yeah um and yeah the prices as well is like really really cool like for top 12 it's um a year's contract with red eight gallery so that that really stood out to me yeah um as being a really cool chance um yeah it is amazing I always think when for lots of different art prizes you have to win to be able to get your artwork seen and the fact that you're already a finalist I do feel like finalists yeah. have won already you've got your own night like you have yeah. your own exhibition space your yeah. work's being hung up in loads of places around London yeah. I just think it's such a a great feeling and obviously we have to wait until September to find out who is going to be the know, artist of the yeah. year so we'll wait for that but what are your ambitions for the future I've moved recently um mm -hmm. so I want to start um using bigger canvases and do more sort of detailed work um just make great work, see it in big galleries and be a full-time artist. It's Tate gone, Modern, so. I see you there. Uh, I see you there. Let's, Let's manifest it. <laughs> no, no, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you.